What I cannot understand is why anyone would think that Donald Trump will shake things up in a way that is good for you. We remember you being president, buddy. Such a deeply personal decision should be made by the woman whose body is involved, not by politicians. Let's look at more clips of Obama as he proves that he really is the best at this campaigning stuff, this time rallying in Arizona for Harris, doing so while calling out Trump for his shortcomings, for his multiple lies on this campaign trail and during his presidency, and we can just jump in where's needed for the additional context. Remember, Donald Trump was president for four years. He likes to talk about Kamala being vice president for you. We remember you being president, buddy. Yeah, and I mean, this is such a hilariously true point that I never understand why MAGA even tries to do this. Kamala stepped in as the nominee and everything that MAGA was saying was Biden's fault and that he directly caused. They just pretended that Kamala has been doing instead as if most of the population just doesn't know what the VP's actual job is. I'm sorry, but outside of MAGA, most people could probably pass a civics test, especially when you think about the fact that Trump was literally the president for four years and he underperformed his entire campaign goals and he underperformed Obama's presidency, underperformed Biden's presidency at this point. I mean, he literally ran in 2020 on make America great again. Like, why do you have to make it great again if you were just president for four years? Shouldn't it be great? I mean, it's all nonsense, right? The more you think about it, while and while he was actually president, like while he was actually in charge, he never brought 4% GDP growth like he promised. He underperformed Obama in that metric, by the way. He never replaced Obamacare like he promised, central promise to his campaign. Never built a wall that Mexico would pay for like he promised, central promise to his campaign. The 55 miles of wall he did build, Americans pay for. He literally created an organization to take donations as well like and it never came to nothing but he took millions of dollars what happened in that those millions he never got infrastructure passed like he promised he would he never even tried to do this he didn't bring back american manufacturing we had a manufacturing recession before covid americans didn't get a four thousand dollar pay raise from the tax cut trickling down like he promised wages barely even kept up with inflation during his presidency he didn't eliminate the deficit like he promised he increased it by over 60 percent he said he drained the swamp and now he even admits, oh, well, I was tricked and, and did not drain the swamp, but we're supposed to believe he would this time. He never brought peace to the Middle East, another core promise he made. He actually only made tensions worse, moving the embassy to annex land, leaving Palest Palestinians out of the normalization talks. I could name more, but we do have a couple other clips to look at as well. I mean, I, I, I listened to some of the language that's being thrown around. Look, even on the most contentious issues, I, I've always said there are good people of conscience on both sides of the abortion divide. And I respect anybody whose faith tells them that it's not something that they would do, that they support. But if we believe in freedom, then we should at least agree that such a deeply personal decision should be made by the woman whose body is involved, not by politicians. This is such facts and it's funny because Republicans try and parade around as the party of individual liberty and freedom and small government, which is funny for multiple reasons we'll get into, but what's more big government than wanting politicians in a woman's doctor's office? The government controlling her medical decisions, her body. What's more big government than wanting the government in schools? Politicians controlling what books that kids can and can't read. What's more big government than wanting politicians in kids' therapy sessions, telling them they can't feel or express themselves with any gender that isn't aligned directly with their sex, because these are all Republican positions that they actually hold, yet they pretend to be small government. Can someone make that make sense? It's also funny because they'll say things like, well, big tech is against us when Trump's VP is literally a tech bro with connections to all the actual big tech people. Elon Musk, all the big tech people are literally connected to donating and backing the Trump campaign. Or they'll say big media, despite them having the biggest mainstream media station owning all local radio through Sinclair media and it being proven that they pay the biggest new media that being like social media YouTube creators to grift for them like the list goes on and on but believing Republicans want small government is 
hilariously ignorant at best. They want more government that favors them and their beliefs is all, but they hide that behind the lie that we're going to make small government by taking away the agencies they feel aren't beneficial to them. Like, you know, the EPA that protects workers from hazardous conditions. So evil. So I understand why people are looking to shake things up. I get why sometimes folks are frustrated with politics. I'm sometimes frustrated with politics. So, so, so I get it. What I cannot understand is why anyone would think that Donald Trump will shake things up in a way that is good for you. That I don't understand. Because, because there is absolutely no evidence that this man thinks about anybody but himself. Exactly, and I would just refer back to his four years again here. Trump packed the court with conservative judges like every other Republican does. Conservative judges that will strip away rights from women, from kids, from LGBTQ communities. He hired lobbyists and billionaires to fill his cabinet in appointed positions who would keep up the same status quo that the government has had for decades. He expanded the government through creating new military branches. He expanded the government overreach by passing Schedule F that allowed the government, the president exactly, or specifically, to be able to fire bureaucrats. He added to the debt and deficit in crazy amounts, something that taxpayers have to deal with. He did not even attempt to balance the budgets. He packs, passed tax cuts that favored the rich, which, you know, the government is uh, disproportionately wealthy. Uh, favored the rich more so than than any other past tax cuts did. 83% of the benefits in those tax cuts went to the top 10%. But people are still believing his 2016 marketing of, well, I'm not a politician and I'm going to drain the swamp and the government is against me because of what I represent. When again, he had four years, lived up to none of this, kept up the status quo, if anything, expanded government overreach. Now he's almost 80, chose a status quo Republican vice president and also wants to weaponize weaponize the government in ways we've literally never seen before. Does it sound like small government when he says he'll have ICE walking the streets, busting in houses, car checking brown people to make sure that they're citizens or legal immigrants? Does it sound like small government when he says he'll weaponize the National Guard against the enemy within, talking about Democrats, of course? Or does this sound like government overreach to a degree that MAGA only wishes that they could point to Democrats and say that they're doing? I mean, again, never forget this part. Every accusation for MAGA is just a confession. If you enjoyed this video, we're Social Society. We're a commentary channel influenced by politics, society, and the economy. We are pretty left-leaning on this channel, but we're open to our right-wingers as well. The biggest thing here is having conversations that get everyone to the bottom of the truth. If that sounds like something that could interest you, consider smashing that subscribe button, leaving us a like, or even commenting on this video. We even have memberships available as low as $3 if you'd like to support, because the only way we become a society is together.